Hey guys, so today I'm super excited to be doing the very first in a new series on my channel. The series is going to be called Face to Face and it is an interview series talking to some of my favourite women. No matter what they do, I'm going to be talking to YouTubers, I'm going to be talking to people from the beauty and fashion world, celebrities, basically just awesome, inspirational women who I look up to. I'm going to be sitting down and having a bit of a beauty chat with them, just getting them round to my flat, having a cup of tea and a chat and just finding out a bit more about them and having a good old chin wag. So I hope you guys enjoy this first episode. I'm so excited to be chatting to Lisa Eldridge today. She's about to come around to the flat and we're gonna have a beauty chat. If you don't know who Lisa is, where have you been? Are you, have you been hiding under a rock? She is one of the biggest makeup artists in the UK. She's had an incredible career and she obviously has a YouTube channel as well. So she has an amazing YouTube channel that I've followed for years and I've met her a few times before. She's a super, super nice lady and I can't wait to get chatting with her about everything beauty because this lady knows it all. Let's get into it. Hi Lisa. Hi Flair. Thank you so much for coming on my first ever. Oh, I'm honoured. Thank I, you for inviting me. You were the first person on my list. I couldn't believe it when you replied. I was like, yes, oh my god, I'm so excited. Oh no, I'm honoured. Thank you for having me. I've been watching your videos for a really, really long time, and obviously following your work. So I'm really excited to have you here to talk about makeup first of all, and then a little bit about your kind of experience and journey and your career and stuff. So there's going to be three questions that I'm going to ask everybody okay. on this series. Yeah. And the first one, I'm very excited to know, what is on your face? What are you wearing today? Okay, I've got um, Troy Surratt Foundation, okay. which is the one that comes in, it's in my bag, it kind of comes in a, it's a kick with a brush, it's so good for doing makeup on the go. Yeah. And it's the first time that I've had one of those types types of contraptions that doesn't deliver like too much foundation because usually those ones you click them and loads of when they have brush out. like already yes, in them and they're also annoying because you get so much product but this one just gives a little bit of product and um so awesome. i've got that on i've got um a little mini eyeshadow palette i don't even know which brand it is because it's so tiny it really fits in my makeup bag i've got um mark jacobs Blush on. on yeah, the new one. Blush. How yeah. are you finding those? You nice. Like them? Yeah. Really nice. I like the mix of kind of shimmer and the two tones. I yeah. love that kind of mixing two different shades. You got favourite colour? Yeah, I don't know what it's going to be. Get it out if you have it, by all oh, means. Yeah. Let's have a look. Okay, that one. Oh, yeah. So. <laughs> Like Lush it. and libido. Libido, brilliant. I mean. <laughs> and I've got Dolly Wink mascara on. Which yes. never comes off. Which it like never, does not budge. <laughs> ever, ever comes off, even when you're trying to take it off. It takes two goes with oil. Um, I've got Idol lipstick, which is um, a new lipstick that I designed and created. So I kind of did it for myself because it's the colour <laughs> that I wanted. And um, that's for long con. And, and I love this for travelling, the Dior powder. Because oh, yeah. it's it's loose powder, but only enough comes out. So you don't get all that. Spills. Yeah, because okay. I prefer it. So what products are you most excited that either have launched this year or maybe that you've seen that are about to come out? Um, gosh, um, God, it's going to sound like I'm really blowing my own trumpet here, but I do love my Sonia Ricciel collection for yeah, long Yeah, so beautiful. Love it. Do you know, I haven't got a full set of that yet myself. Have you not? No. You need to sort that out. Um, and that often happens when you create products because you kind of forget that you didn't, and then suddenly you'll be like, oh my god, I didn't buy it. Is there any left? No, they're all gone, and that's happening. I think it's nearly sold out, so I need to get myself. Yeah, an incredibly sad timing with that it. coming out as well. Yeah, so. I know, it was, it was really sad. And then my Christmas collection is my favorite thing I think I've ever done. But really, ever? Got, well, the, pa the eye palette. Can you tell us anything about it? Like well, it was loosely new... based on the packaging on a vintage item that I had in my collection. Okay. And um, just the colours. I mean, this is really selfish because I often do colours that I want for myself. And I'm like, for a Christmas collection, I personally didn't want red lipstick and gold. I wanted something different. Too obvious. I don't. So I've done what I think are really chic eye colours and quite different lip colours for Christmas. Yeah. So I'm really pleased about that. And apart from that, obviously, I'm pu pulling my own stuff, pushing my own stuff, I, um, I've liked, I liked the, I tried the Tom Ford waterproof mascara. Uh, foundation on holiday and I was okay. hiking and I thought this is this really going to work you're going to put like, it to the test yeah, properly in the Alps in the Italian Alps hiking like uphill downhill 
if they're a little bit like you and they're not full face, but it just didn't move. It's mm. got quite a waxy texture. Um, I thought well, that's quite incredible Yeah. Um, to like use even as a concealer. And the other one I've been asked everybody in the series is if there was a song that was a soundtrack to your life, what would it be? Maybe the suede song, She's in Fashion. Yeah, because I love I've it. I've really been in the fashion business now for since I was quite young. And the lyrics in that song are all about somebody that works in fashion and it's quite a fun song, so maybe I'll choose that one. Perfect, <laughs> I love it. The other thing I wanted to ask you as well is obviously you have been working in the fashion and beauty industry for yeah. your whole career. Yeah. What was the decision behind starting YouTube? Because you were such an early adopter of it in yeah. the way that a lot of other people really weren't. You know, it was kind of not really the thing to do as yeah. a kind of beauty professional to be on YouTube. Mm. In yeah, it was really looked down on. Yeah. It. It kind of, in the beginning, I kind of, I was really into blogs, and I liked YouTube right from the beginning. I thought, and I loved watching girls doing their makeup because as a makeup artist, you're working with celebrities. I was working on big ad campaigns for millions of dollars, and you know, big copy lines like yeah. make your eyelashes look 17 times longer and all this stuff. And then when I first saw YouTube. You know, it was Lauren Luke, the first person I yeah, saw. Yeah, back like, in the day. Wow, this is so <laughs> subversive. This is amazing. You know, girls can go on there and say, well, I like this mascara. It actually didn't work for me or it came off. And I thought this is going to change the whole industry. This yeah. is the end of, you know, the smoke and mirrors, really, the, the world that I was from. And I thought that was really exciting. And I used to be saying to people all the time, it's all going to change. You know, it's going to be this amazing. All these girls are on YouTube and they're kind of, talking about makeup and they're using products in a way that we had never seen before because usually you read about makeup in magazines and it's like you know put the dark color in the socket line yeah that doesn't really mean anything but it's when you can so actually hard see, words you, you can't good words. translate it to your own face and at the time i was doing um, a tv show 10 years younger and because my website was like a, just a basic portfolio so every time the show was on i would get hundreds and thousands of people going on there that were watching the show because it was so popular and then they would send me questions and I remember looking on the Channel 4 website and being absolutely shocked and quite horrified that there'd be sort of the four presenters or something and under mine there was like 500 all questions, the questions. <laughs> and I was like, but like some of them were really heart-wrenching like people oh. saying I watched the show and I've got this problem and I want to and I'm like I can't answer all of these there's so many of them so I thought well yeah I thought I'd like to change my website into something that's uh, more of a destination so I can answer all these questions and I just thought I'm going to make YouTube videos but I was quite scared about it really because yeah. I just thought well I don't want anyone in the fashion business to know because I thought they would really look down on me I kind of thought that I worried a little bit I mean I was so sure that it was the right thing because I really wanted to do it. I wanted to connect with the people who'd left all the questions and you know, when I used to do 10 years younger, I hated the editing. I always hated yeah. the editing. I was like, you if have I was draw. editing that, <laughs> if I was lighting that, I wouldn't do it like that. So that appealed to me, definitely. The whole world and talk, you know, the whole world of YouTube and being able to talk to regular people, I really liked. So that was it. And I just thought a publicist is going to watch it and say, we can't book her anymore for A-list celebrities because she's on YouTube now. Yeah. Oh. It's going to be like, or people would find it, but no one noticed. Really? In the business for three years. Three years? Yes. And then what was their reaction after that? Well, I remember the first time it happened and I was, I'd, be, I'd done like, I'd already done like 50 videos yes. by then. And I was on a shoot and it was like a really cool fashion magazine. And um, I walked in and the stylist assistant went, oh my God, I love your videos on YouTube. And everyone sort of went. <laughs> And then I remember someone went to me, you've got videos on YouTube. And I was like, are they talking like, to Lisa? <laughs> yeah, I said, but they're not for you, they're for real people. <laughs> I love that. I love that. Oh. And the first time a celebrity ever said anything was, I was on this job with Kate Winslet and I knew her really well. I knew all her friends and family and things. And a friend of hers came to the shoot that I'd never met before. And she's like, oh, and this is Lisa. You know, she always does my makeup. She's a fantastic makeup artist. Oh, and she makes these amazing videos on YouTube and she teaches women all over the world how to cover their spots. I love it. And I was like, oh, do you know about this? She's <laughs> like, yeah, she went all, whenever she'd been to LA, people had talked about them. And I was like, oh, I never knew that you knew about that. And that was kind of it. But by then I had such a, you know, it, was, it gathered such momentum. And I never knew it was going to, 
I kind of thought maybe I'll do five videos and I'll answer all these questions mm -hmm. and I'll kind of move on. But I mean, you must find this as well. You kind of, you do a video and you get to know the people that are leaving messages yeah. and you like them and you get engaged with them and they ask for another video and it's, I don't know, it just It's never of, ending as well, just, there's always yeah, something there's coming always out. Conversation. And I always say that I've learned as much from the people who watch my videos as, as they have from me. Because when you, you know, you have all this communication with people and they tell you, well, there's another brand that's really good for that. And I'm like, really? I didn't know that. What yeah. is this brand? <laughs> and do you think, you, you said before you that you could see it kind of changing the industry. Do yeah. you think that's happened and has yes. it happened how you thought it would? Or yeah. has it given you any kind of surprises? No, it happened exactly as I thought it would. And like, people used to think I was mad. And I used to say to like big heads of makeup companies, you know, there's these girls on YouTube that can say this product doesn't it you know increases or something and they'd be like oh no no that's completely separate it's completely, yeah like no one will listen to that it's a different world and i think that the business was very slow to kind of understand the power of it and the other thing the last thing i wanted to ask you is you've obviously worked on some amazing things throughout your career and a lot of quite a varied kind of collection yeah. of different things what are you most proud of do you think if you could single out one thing or two if you can't, if you can't choose one. <laughs> um, because I feel like I work in so many different industries, so I work like in editorial, so probably I was most proud of my first Vogue cover. Yeah, because who was it? It was Claudia Schiffer, and I remember thinking when I was trying to get into makeup, if I can one day get a Vogue cover, I'll, that'll be it, I'll Celebrate retire. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and um, I remember getting a Vogue cover and kind of walking past the news agent. And then every time I came to another news agent, I'd go in and just walk past the shelf <laughs> and just look at it on the shelf. Um, so that was amazing. And then obviously writing my book because I'd always been interested in the history of makeup. So I thought one day I'll do something, you know, I might write this all yeah. down. So I've now done that. So that's, I feel very proud of that because that was such a build up for so many years. Um, I'm most proud of my family, my cats. Um, yeah, <laughs> I love you that. Know, everything really. <laughs> Um, I feel like my, you know, I've got so many different, I've got my personal life, I've got my sort of editorial, I've got my work for long con, which I'm proud of, and then my kind of hobbies, which are history of makeup and collecting vintage makeup. And have you got a favourite piece of vintage makeup? That's a bonus question at the end. Yeah, I've got, um, God, which one can I choose? It's like trying to choose a favourite child. <laughs> um, I do have an amazing um, lighter, which looks exactly like a lighter, and it was downhill in the 1930s. They used to make those incredible, you've probably seen them, um, silver lighters for men. They were very expensive, they are very chic, they were amazing. And they just made, we think it's about 20 for their best customers, and they were makeup compendiums, so they look exactly like a lighter. And this is like the early 1930s, but when you open it, it's got blush, powder, perfume, black coal pencil, and lipstick. That's amazing. And it's all hidden inside the lighter, and it's so, beautiful and so incredible and I've never ever seen one I just found one once and I've since I think one came up in some of these years ago but you never ever see them well that's it thank you so much for thank being you. the first person on face to face guys if you enjoyed this video make sure you leave me a comment below telling me who you want to see next I have a list of people I want to ask but I want to know who you guys would like to see a massive thank you to Lisa thank you. for joining me and if you don't already follow her on YouTube you should be because she's awesome and I'll see you soon bye, bye.